Wanna take a bet? I bet 10 bucks that I can eat glass. Of course, that's stupid. Well, you owe me 10 bucks because check this out. Another super yummy experiment which totally works as a delicious dessert is edible glass. <laughs> yup, this thing looks just as glass but tastes exactly like a lollipop. Take a mold, I'm using this hard silicone one and spray it with a bit of non-stick cooking spray. Spread it around the mold evenly with a tissue paper. Now let's cook up some yummy glass. Place a pot over the heat and pour in 3.5 parts of sugar, 1.5 parts of corn syrup and 1 part of water. Optionally add a drop or two of food coloring. Even after the mixture starts boiling you should keep on cooking and stirring it all the time. Your Edible glass has to reach the temperature of 150 degrees Celsius or 300 Fahrenheit if you want it to set hard. Now we can take this yumminess of the heat and carefully pour it into the mold. The mixture is extremely hot so be super careful with it. Leave your edible glass to cool down and then you can take it out of the mold. The most important part when making lollipops or hard candy is that you boil the mixture until it reaches 300 Fahrenheit. Once cooled down this candy becomes shiny, transparent and rigid but fragile. Exactly like glass. Try pranking your friends, making them believe that you can eat glass. I'm sure they'll be so confused. No, I'm so sick of this spaghetti. Why settle down for plain and boring pasta when we can easily transform it into the most epic rainbow color explosion? This is such a fun coloring experiment plus a totally delicious recipe. First off, you need to cook your spaghetti as usual. Fill a pot with water and wait for it to start boiling. Take any kind of pasta or spaghetti and throw it into the boiling water. When that's cooked, drain your pasta by pouring the pot of spaghetti and water through a colander. Now it's time for the fun part, which is coloring up our delicious spaghetti. Take a few smaller bowls, one for each color, and fill them up with water. Add a bit of food coloring into each bowl to color it up. I went for red, green, yellow, and blue. Keep in mind that the more color you mix in your water, the more vibrant and potent the color of your spaghetti will be. These are ready, so let's throw in our spaghetti. Leave them soak for at least 5 to 10 minutes. All that's left to do is to drain them and look at these amazing colors. I seriously didn't expect them to turn out that vibrant. Definitely the coolest spaghetti I've ever seen. Imagine inviting your friends over for a dinner and serving them this epic rainbow spaghetti. They would be so impressed and probably a bit confused too. This coloring technique is super quick and easy, so much fun to try, plus you can use it for spaghetti, macaroni, basically pasta in any shape or form. And don't be scared, the spaghetti will taste just as usual. I actually don't drink coffee, but I know that for many people starting the day with a cup of coffee is so important. If you're one of them and need to have your coffee in the morning, but at the same time you're always late for school, this hack is right up your alley. Instead of having your beloved coffee from a mug, try making coffee popsicles. It's so simple and saves a lot of time when getting ready in the morning. Pour your coffee in a bunch of popsicle molds. I'm using instant coffee, no judgment. Pop this in the freezer overnight and you have your to-go popsicles ready for the entire week ahead. Have one on the way to school and by the time you get there you'll feel super awake and refreshed. You know those times when you get so hungry during classes and your tummy starts making those funny rumbling noises? I've definitely been there and it felt pretty awkward. The easiest way to avoid this funny struggle is to have a quick snack on hand. This one is seriously so easy and convenient. Take a packet of coloring pencils that doesn't have any opening at the front. Take all the coloring pencils out and you have lots of free space to hide your favorite snack inside. The best is to go for something healthy like nuts and seeds, but I find those gummy ropes in my grocery shop and the package was just perfect to fit inside the coloring pencils box so I had to go for this. Very sneaky and convenient when oh, you need yeah. a boost of energy. And remember to only have a small treat every day on general, always opt for healthy and nutritious food. It's 
time for a super cool glow-in-the-dark experiment, which also doubles up as a delicious treat. We're making yummy glow-in-dark popsicles. To make this even more fascinating, we're gonna add gummy candy as well. Grab your favorite gummy candy, I went for gummy bears and sour gummy patches and throw them into your popsicle mold. For the glow-in-the-dark ingredient, we're using tonic water. Fill the molds with this magical glow-in liquid. Lastly, we need to put the lids on and stick our popsicles into the freezer for a few hours. There we go, delicious gummy candy, glow-in-the-dark popsicles are all done and ready to eat. These popsicles also look so gorgeous with all the pretty colors, but they look even better in the dark, under the UV light. Tonic water is a carbonated soft drink, which contains quinine. Quinine is a fluorescent substance. See how our popsicles glow in the dark? I think they're perfect for a party. You can surprise your friends with spooky glow-in-the-dark popsicles and drinks. What an easy, affordable and hands-down awesome DIY treat idea. I absolutely love it. I remember making potato stamps in primary school and I have to share with you this unusual but really cool painting method. Take an inexpensive notebook and stick on a few pieces of double-sided tape or use any other glue of your choice. Place a piece of white cardstock paper on top and we got a plain white notebook ready to be decorated. For the watermelon notebook, cut your potato in half. Cut it again to get a potato quarter which works perfectly for a watermelon stamp. Squeeze some red acrylic paint from the tube. Use paintbrush to apply it on one potato side and we're ready to start stamping. Press potato on your notebook cover to get a yummy watermelon print. I like how this stamping technique makes the shapes kind of imperfect and rustic. I think it looks beautiful. Besides the red watermelons, I also want some orange ones. Using orange acrylic paint and another potato quarter, I'm making orange prints on all the empty areas of the notebook. Dip your brush in green paint and draw a line below each red half circle. Leave a bit of white in between to make it look more realistic. For the finishing touch, grab a black pen or marker and draw a few seeds to each of the watermelon slices. This detail really brings the design together and makes the watermelons look so real and yummy. Watermelon is such a pretty fruit, I love its colors. Plus I like how it reminds me of summer and it tastes delicious. All these facts combined, this notebook just makes me so happy only by looking at it. You can make any kind of shape using potatoes. Here I made triangle stamps from the potato house. Put on a bit of acrylic paint of your choice. I'm gonna use three colors and the first one is green. Press it on the notebook cover and there you have a beautiful triangle print. My next color is pink, then a blue and repeat. I went for the pattern where every other row has triangles turned upside down. You can see that even if you're bad at freehand drawing like I am, you can still make beautiful creations using paint. You really can mess it up with potato stamping. I honestly had such a great time making these potato notebooks and they turned out Let's so Let's make cute. a mesmerizing and magical galaxy out of milk. Yup, you heard me right, how mind-blowing is that? Take some whole milk and pour it onto a plate. Now grab some food coloring and squeeze it out, making a few colored bunches around the plate. I decided to use blue and purple because as said, I wanted to make it look like a galaxy. You can also make a rainbow explosion by using all the beautiful colors of the rainbow. To activate our magical galaxy, we need to dip a cotton pad or a napkin in some dish soap. Then place it right in the middle of your plate and let the epic show begin. The colors will start dancing around, creating gorgeous marble effects. Seems like the dish soap is pushing milk towards the outer edge of a plate. Food coloring wants to have some fun too, so it joins the right, leaving beautiful color traces behind. To make this look like a real galaxy, let's pour in some silver glitter to represent the stars. You can you can even take a couple of q-tips and play with it. Just one swipe creates such a gorgeous swirly marble effect, how pretty. Let's take our galaxy to another level of epicness, yep, that's possible. I'm gonna add in some holographic heart-shaped confetti too. These hearts are so sparkly and beautiful. Sprinkle them all around your milk galaxy and you're ready to enjoy the sparkliest galaxy dance. <laughs> milk and soap truly are a magical couple. I'll show you how to instantly transform water into ice and grow these magical ice mountains right in front of your eyes. Take a bottle of purified or distilled water and put it in the freezer. Wait for about 2 hours and 15 to 30 minutes. Carefully take the bottle out of the freezer and unscrew the lid. Have a piece of ice or frozen metal on hand and start pouring the water on the ice. As you can see, a real ice mountain starts growing right in front of you. How flipping amazing is that? This happens because in the freezer the water temperature has dropped below 0 degrees Celsius. Water wants to freeze but there are no impurities to initiate the formation of ice crystals. We say that the water is super cool. As soon as it touches the ice cube the crystallization occurs and we get an epic ice mountain. So mind blowing. Alternatively, track 
carefully pouring the super cooled water into a clean glass. The glass has to be extremely clean since even the slightest impurity can initiate the crystallization. Drop in a piece of ice and check out how ice crystals start forming instantly. How cool, right? You can totally freeze a glass of water in an instant just by dropping in a bit of ice. <laughs> so there you go, me and you are just as cool and magical as Elsa from Frozen. I've seen a Skittles experiment all over the internet and it looks super cool, so I had to try it out. Take a bunch of Skittles and place them on a plate, making a giant circle, heart, star or any other shape. I went for the tropical version of Skittles because I think the colors are prettier than with the original ones. My circle is complete and luckily there's one Skittle left for me. Yummy! Put a small amount of warm water onto a plate and watch the magic happen. The colors from Skittles will start traveling towards the center, making a magical colorful wheel. However, it seems like my table is not completely horizontal because as you can see the colors on one side have expanded way further from the edge than the colors on the other side. You know what they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm gonna show you how you can make an awesome pencil case out of trash. <laughs> no, out of your favorite candy bag. You'll need a bag of candy, duct tape, glue gun and a zipper. Take your scissors and trim away the upper and the bottom edge of your bag. Flip it around and make a vertical cut along the candy bag. Next step, eat all the yummy candy. Mm, <laughs> Just kidding, yummy. you can totally save some for later because that's a lot of sugar. Now you need to decide how big you want your pencil case to be. I want mine quite small so I'm cutting away the sides and I'm left with about 8 by 8 inch square. Take some duct tape or washi tape and use it to cover the back of your candy wrapper. This will make our pencil case more sturdy and durable. Grab a zipper and place it on a flat surface. Apply a stripe of glue along one side. You can use hot glue or any other glue that has a good hold. Stick the candy wrapper sheet on like that. Flip your work around and temporarily fold the zipper down. I'm using some hair clips to help it stay in place. Apply a stripe of glue along that side of zipper as well and fold the candy wrapper up to stick it in place. This is what we have so far. Unzip the zipper and flip your pencil case inside out. Glue the sides together like this. It's really important to have the pencil case unzipped at this point, otherwise you'll never be able to flip it inside out. Okay, the glue has set, so flip your work around to reveal your gorgeous candy pencil case. Isn't this the cutest thing ever? Candy bags are always so colorful and pretty. And the fact that you can turn the wrapper of your favorite candy into an amazing pencil case is just the best thing ever. With this one, you would totally win school's most creative pencil case award if such thing existed. Sometimes the more we try, the more everything goes wrong. So today we're gonna embrace the beauty of chaos and make a bunch of amazing desserts with help of balloons. Let's do this! It's time to forget what happened earlier and use balloons to decorate our cake this time around. I like to start by frosting the cake with some simple whipped cream and I apply an even layer all over. To make the side of the cake nice and neat, make vertical lines with the help of a piping bag or one of those plastic cake decorating tools. I decided to make a sprinkles explosion cake, which means I have to put together a variety of sprinkles in different colors and sizes. Are we guys ready to pop this monster? Okay, let's do it. Although I'm pretty scared, I must admit. Three, two, one. Can you hear the sound of sprinkles entering every single corner of my apartment? I tell ya, the mess is real, but the result is stunning, don't you think? The cake looks so colorful and fun. It definitely proves that a random explosion of fun can be pretty and interesting, plus we don't have to stress about making everything perfect and precise. I would call this a beautiful chaos cake. I think it's time to celebrate, so let's stick a cake sparkler into a gorgeous cake and put it on fire. I feel like this is the best day of my life, there's just too much delicious food around me and I'm living for it. Check out how magical this is. Sometimes you just have to let loose, set free and just enjoy your life and your work even if it's not picture perfect. The important thing is that you have fun, appreciate moments and embrace the beautiful and chaotic mess around you.